there, you'll have um, the, the sheared pins will prevent the blade from getting stuck into the log. Okay. And if the belts are too loose, the same thing will happen. So it's, uh, I mean, sawmills of today, people are in a, in a, in a cubby hole and they're cutting and slicing and they don't even know when they hit metal, you know, they just go right through it and, and all of a sudden the boards don't cut right and, and that's when they figure it out. This, this is a 1920 machine and um, that's what's kind of fun, using something from that era. And obviously um, all you really need is a couple of crescent wrenches to do any adjustment on this thing, which is, you know, as long as they open up to an inch, inch and a sixteenth, every adjustment is basically uh, able to be done with a crescent wrench. And um, the, obviously the big nut that holds the blade on is about two and a half inches. And it's, uh, the RPM of this is about 506 revolutions per minute. So it's not really whipping around like a router would, but um, it's still going quick enough. The most dangerous thing probably at the mill is, is uh, cables. Not the blade itself, because everybody knows to stay away from the blade, but the cables that run up and down the track, this uh, gear right here, this is where you don't want to have any loose clothing or anything of that nature when you're, when you're using this. Um, and as you, as you use it, you get a little more uh, confidence or a little too cocky at times. That's where you might be wanting to go too fast or whatever. And once you hit metal, and, you, and, and uh, this is a brand new blade, so hopefully we won't hit metal on the next log. You never know if there's metal in the log, especially if it comes from a, 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 what they call a yard tree. Because everybody puts something, you know, be a dog uh, or a dog wrapped around it. So you do find different things in there. When I do hit metal, hopefully uh, I only lose about three or four teeth out of the deal. Um, carbide tip teeth on this cost like uh, $3 a piece right now because it's a new blade. I'm using these teeth until they're no longer any good and then I'll get carbide teeth to put in it. And you just hope that you don't hit metal because when you do, it's, uh, it costs money and downtime. But once again, I'm not doing this uh, to try to, to make production. Certain mills do 2,000 board feet an hour. If I do 2,000 board feet in a week, I'm happy uh, because my goal is basically just to cut unique pieces of wood and I'm not trying to cut wood for siding for somebody, even though I might have siding, uh, because I can't compete with the other mills. What I'm trying to do is cut stuff that nobody else will even look at. They won't even want, they won't even want to burn it. They'll just bury it because it's uh, nasty, gnarly knots. And that's the next piece that we're going to try to do is this eastern white pine, which I'm hoping that it will have some real nice knots in there, get some spike knots in it. And hopefully I'll get about four, maybe five pieces out of this. And, and that's what we're going to set up for now. Let me just uh, pull. So what we're going to try to do is this on the bottom. Up, no, up. what's going to happen here. We just cut this off. Hopefully it will clear the blade. If it doesn't clear the blade, we might be able to just snap it off. But I'm going to make a waist cut, two and a quarter, and two and a quarter. Then we have to spin it around in order to get the other cut. Um, it's, it's a difficult cut to do. Most people would, ne would never even attempt to do that. But when you see the wood that we're hoping to get out of here. Now this is a yard tree. so. Somebody could have put something in there when it was only 8 inches in diameter, and we won't find out until we open it up. You could use a metal detector on it, but a lot of times the metal detector picks up other metal. Metal here, metal on there. So um, it's uh, iffy, and uh, that's what makes it kind of fun, especially when, you're, when you don't hit metal, especially with a new blade. I'm so, able to sell some furniture. Maybe I'll have a different way of starting this than this, but for, until then, this way I don't have to worry about anybody else trying to start it because they might be afraid of using a screwdriver and getting a shot, but here we go.
years, the, this shows you how much it grew in one year's time. They have spring wood and summer wood. In the springtime, the wood grows a lot quicker. In the summer, it slows down. So one of the problems with that is if you have, like, pine, sometimes the spring wood is, is softer than the summer wood, so we get, like, ripples in the board, uh, which is not desirable. But in old houses, people want that. People want the old house where it has the 14, 15 inch wide board on it and has a little washboard effect because that's the way it was. That's when people cut the wood, they're not going to cut it into strips, even though that makes it more stable because you cut it and you use it the way you had it. So that's, that's the story we're sticking with.